course, of course. Uh, thank you, Helen, and uh, thank you, Jason, uh, for inviting me also at this edition of the IDEAS uh, 2020 Global AI Conference. So differently than other, other, uh, other uh, presentation, I decided to take a different angle and uh, perhaps providing a, a different contribution, trying to connect the dots between technology, uh, something that we all here are passionate about, entrepreneurship is definitely my work uh, with the M Accelerator uh, within a multidisciplinary uh, approach and uh, which is definitely recurring uh, element in my uh, work. So um, I believe that uh, AI, data science, uh, machine learning, they all have, uh, all uh, professionals uh, uh, working in these fields have a great opportunity uh, to work in a multidisciplinary way that is uh, crucial for entrepreneurship. Um, Thank you, Ellen, for the, for the introduction. Uh, just to reiterate, uh, again, I'm Alessandro Marino Antoni, and I'm, um, I'm, I'm originally from Italy, as you may guess from my name or last name. And I started coding uh, when I was uh, eight, so very young, and I got really young, passionate about into gaming with a C Commodore 64. And uh, after that, uh, with the instructions of, that came with the computer, which actually was, uh, I believe, was a book on a manual on the basic. So I started coding with that one. Um, then later on, I, I started uh, to code also a lot of electronics uh, and other, you know, I, I also uh, started coding on, on, on an IBM. Uh, slightly later, let's say in early 90s, um, internet arrived at home and essentially I started uh, developing on the web, uh, also doing a lot of uh, uh, websites and uh, digital marketing, uh, um, you know, for companies in my region. And, uh, and it was extremely easy. There were not that many competitors at the time. And, um, and, uh, I, and, and it, it, it was an exciting moment, essentially. Uh, during the university, I studied computer science in L'Aquila, exactly in the center of Italy. And uh, the, during the last years of my study, I collaborated briefly with somebody very close to Conan. So you may, since you know we are at Data Science uh, AI Conference, uh, perhaps uh, you guys have heard of the Conan networks, neural networks. So I got really excited about unsupervised learning. And at that time I was doing a, a couple of projects on uh, financial data. Uh, later on, moving on a few years, uh, I got a scholarship at the University of Southern California uh, here in Los Angeles, at the, uh, create, uh, the Institute of Creative Technologies. And I worked there for like six months as a visiting scholar. And the period actually of research uh, was, it became my, my thesis uh, for, for the degree I was uh, finishing up in Italy. Um, moving on, uh, just one year after I got hired at uh, UCLA and I had the opportunity to work over there for 10 years uh, at the UCLA University of California here in Los Angeles, Remap Center which is a research joint effort between the uh, School of Theater, Film and Television at UCLA and the Engineering School uh, at UCLA as well. And it was a, a great experience also over there, allowing me to grow definitely my skills into coding, but also uh, being a, a small research environment, I had the opportunity to uh, you know, talk to corporations, uh, to uh, have to run and fund my own projects over there. Uh, it was a great experience with, uh, at the beginning of my, uh, say, a venture in the U.S. And um, now, uh, besides, I also have another company that I do similar things. I was actually doing at UCLA, so I do consultation for large uh, entertainment companies. And more recently, we design and develop uh, uh, art and uh, entertainment um, experiences. And that could be on a stage, it could be on a screen, and uh, it could be on architecture. And actually I have uh, on the presentation, I I'm gonna show, share with you a photo of, of an artwork I've done a few years back. Um, 
but essentially, uh, recent, uh, what I, I was getting to the point that recently, the, over uh, three years ago, I launched a new company, which is M Accelerator, and uh, I'm the founder and the director. And it's an accelerator program. It's a hybrid version between an accelerator startup program and an incubator. And we help uh, with uh, ideation with different stages along the startup development, uh, all the founders that are uh, participating in our program, which means uh, usually as ideation, we have a program 12 weeks uh, for, I would say students or anybody else that is interested in transforming an idea into uh, a more developed business concepts. Some of those participants actually were able to bootstrap companies out of, uh, you know, an, uh, starting from an idea. And now they were, and now they are running companies between here, China, and Italy, uh, and, and also uh, several other countries. Um, with uh, with the initial idea, they started uh, the accelerator. Uh, then we work uh, primarily with early stage startups, and uh, usually these are companies that are at the early beginning. They perhaps just only have a minimum viable product, so they have a. A product that is extremely simple, but somehow is still something that could, they could deliver to early customers. And, um, and with them, actually, we're also working online since the beginning of the year. Um, with them, we're working online and uh, online, I have to say, is slightly more optimized. Uh, these participants are founders from pretty much everywhere in the world, and they already have a company. Uh, there's something that somehow is not well designed yet in terms of business, and that's why they're taking our program. And then we do more like a, a, a la carte uh, advisory for um, uh, later stage startups. And, uh, and uh, if you're interested, I can go a little bit more in details with some of the cases uh, we had at uh, the accelerator. But the, uh, the angle that I wanted to give at this presentation, essentially, let me say that uh, uh, Looking back of all the work that I've done, I always had, I don't know if you guys are like me, but I always had a folder that is called project in my hard drive. So essentially I just done one project after the other one. And this is all in, in a way, all the experiences that led me to open a, an accelerator. And somehow I'm consolidating all of that. And of course I, I'm not working alone, I have a team of coaches and um, uh, lead coach, uh, Scott Hindle, has more than 30 years of experience into consulting businesses, uh, 25 years into uh, for uh, teaching. He's actually a professor also at UCLA, and um, his main job is being a business consultant. So it's a great combination of uh, experiences that work with me at M Accelerator. Um, I was saying that I've done a lot of projects and looking back uh, the, all of them, uh, definitely there is a strong interest into math, data, and uh, science uh, with a particular interest into patterns. So the patterns that we can you know, uh, find in nature uh, and these two photos primarily were, I, I, I picked them from a, one, a pitch that allowed me to, to, uh, to win an award for a public artwork uh, here in Los Angeles a few years back. Um, I ended up working on uh, pretty much all the projects that I've done, they have a strong uh, foundation on data. Uh, for example, this is uh, in 2008, 2009, uh, an art project I've done with an artist, uh, Marcus Latchens. Uh, this is the Museum of the Royal Academy of Arts in London. In, and the, sculpt, the, 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 the object you see on the facade is our sculpture uh, made out of carbon fiber with uh, 1500 LEDs that uh, were uh, communicating, uh, visualizing the level of carbon dioxide and oxygen. 2008, 2009, it was when uh, the world was becoming aware of uh, uh, climate change and the exhibit actually was uh, that had the main theme of uh, the, the climate change main theme. Um, and uh, data, I see, so I see, uh, so, and uh, don't worry, you are at the right uh, conference. I mean, you, you hit the right Zoom link. Uh, this is the data AI uh, ideas 2020. Um, for me, uh, data, uh, technology, had all and art, they always had um, a great, uh, I, I was always able to work on an intersection of these three, I would say, subjects. 
And uh, you may know that uh, in the Renaissance, many artists uh, were, able, were actually using uh, data, so, some form of data. Uh, in this case, is the Fibonacci series um, and the painting is from uh, Leonardo da Vinci to uh, frame or to balance visual elements in their paintings. And that one really, really intrigued me as a sort of a metaphor uh, for everything else, all the projects I was working on. Um, in this case, the Fibonacci series was definitely one of my inspirations in many other projects. And it's the perfect uh, trade union between uh, art and, and science. Um, and uh, it, it's clear, it's already kind of clear. You be, if you have been following me so far, uh, I hope it's clear that I really like to work across multiple disciplines. And, um, and what I like is that also um, I discovered that for me working across multiple disciplines, it, it, it's the way I learn things. So I really like to dig into one subject, extract uh, a model, and somehow reapplying that model into another subject. And this could be in, related to uh, different industries, in, in different uh, disciplines. And uh, often playing in this way is where you get interesting ideas, innovative ideas. Not all the ideas are good, of course, uh, but at the accelerator, we created a model so that we can test the validity of those ideas. And, uh, but one thing that I, I, I really uh, care and I wanna say is that all of these projects really started from uh, looking at people, looking at uh, uh, the problems that uh, users and people in general may have and working uh, through several steps, I mean, uh, and building solutions for uh, this, those people. Um, I think that um, AI, uh, machine learning, data science, um, in general, uh, computer science, it's, it's, it's obvious, it's extremely crucial for our lives. And uh, from my uh, personal experience, uh, this one, the computer, uh, computer science allow, really allowed me to take part on many different projects. Often uh, using uh, software, I was coding and as a glue among the different fields, among the different disciplines. Um, I ended up working in uh, projects related to neuroscience, related to art history. I'm actually working on a project related to art, hist art history in Italy, and we're designing a tool uh, for, uh, it's an education tool in VR to, uh, so that teachers and other scholars could create their classes uh, using virtual environment, uh, 3D virtual environments in their computers. And we're using a technology that comes from the gaming industry. So um, working within a multidisciplinary environment, as I said before, uh, really um, helped me to, to understand and to construct a, a series of models. And, um, and just let me give you another, another point of inspiration that I had. Um, you may, so again, I, I, I hopefully I'm talking to uh, the right audience, but I'm here at the data science conference, right? So if you studied math, uh, like I did, you may have known, uh, you may have heard of uh, Godel, which is a uh, mathematician in the early mid, uh, mid, mid 1900. And essentially I was really struck by his incompleteness theory and um, it allowed me a little bit of rewarding. Godel formalized that and demonstrated actually that uh, to describe something, so to understand it and eventually to build it, to describe something, we need to look at this something from the outside. So looking at, uh, looking at the system that we are, uh, which is the subject, which is the observation of our study from, uh, from the outside of that system. Uh, I'm not going to get to the details of the uh, the alphabets and the uh, and the and the, the system, the symbols, but this general idea uh, it really really something that I I, I like and uh, it's somehow it resonates a lot with me with working that outside of I was talking about it could be like working on multiple disciplines to understand the other disciplines essentially. So all of the, all the uh, disciplinary bubbles are giving us opportunities to create a system, a, rela a relationship system that allows us to be way more aware of what is happening of the, uh, you know, all the, let's say, uh, research and the, 
projects, any, any projects that we're working on. Um, but uh, I also want to say that um, this may sound really abstract, but at the end of the day, I'm a very, very practical person. And the programs that we develop, for example, at M Accelerator, are all workshops and they are all uh, applicable right there. And uh, um, I feel that with M Accelerator, we are in a, at a great spot where we can look at the society, the impact that technology is taking place to society. And, um, and that many projects, uh, this is a trend that is, has been going on since the beginning of computer science. Uh, the many projects, many problems became uh, uh, software problems, dis disrupting uh, uh, you know, many, many industries. And this is happening, of course, in many fields. Um, before uh, there were, uh, let's say it is happening in healthcare. So medical problems, mechanical problems, more likely today, most of those problems, some of the, definitely some of those problems are software problems. And maybe, uh, you know, better, better words is actually computational problems. And that's really fascinating because to me, it's an opportunity to somehow uh, work in those fields, right? And work with the startups that are uh, helping, um, that are helping people in those fields. Um, I'm, uh, I'm, I, 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 was, I grew up really spending a lot of hours in front of a screen uh, co coding uh, many languages and uh, I, I was always fascinating with creating technology, something that, um, uh, something that happens, uh, this is a, a particular example because it's actually the motivation why I'm running an accelerator <laughs> essentially. So in uh, early, late 19, uh, uh, in 1999, I, I, I was running a small uh, digital marketing agencies in Italy and I had many clients over there. So to make my work easier, essentially, I started developing a software, a web app that would allow me to create, uh, to, uh, that would actually allow me to have the customers completely autonomous. They were able to create new pages, they were able to do layouts, uh, upload the images, photos, updates, and whatever, right? And, uh, and a few years later, in 2005, 2006, I, started hearing, uh, hear, I heard about WordPress that, that just arrived in the market. So, and I discovered that, of course, my software was not, was not based on open source. Uh, was not, uh, although it was still this is very similar, somehow PHP and MySQL based. So I realized that there was something that I was not getting. Right, there was something that was happening around me, but I was not exposed to. And uh, later, only only many years later, I probably can say that what was happening is that besides being in in a in a, in a different place where eventually there was also a, a very strong component of digital divide, um, I was not considering at all marketing and business. I was mainly focused on the product. I was mainly focused on having fun coding. And, uh, and that's definitely what we want to offer our participants. So we want to offer participants that are really skilled and talented in technology development. We wanna offer them all the support that I couldn't have at the time, which is definitely founded on uh, marketing and, uh, and business. Um, and, uh, but working with startups, right? We, we, we are, there are some very, very important numbers to be aware of. Uh, actually, now that I'm thinking about, there was another project I was doing uh, also in 1999 with a friend of mine, Ricardo, and uh, he basically we built a platform that allowed uh, physical stores to send via internet at the time coupons. And uh, we put together, actually it was very skilled salesman. So we put together a network of agents and uh, we started, to, we did that for probably one year. I don't remember exactly, but at a certain point it was not, uh, it's not it was not a viable business. It was, it was a big business. It was a very complex situation considering that in, uh, in central Italy in 1999, internet was not that common to have at the stores or at home. So our project didn't go anywhere, but you may have heard of Groupon a few years back. So there's, this, uh, these are important numbers to know in the startup uh, ecosystem, right? So we know that somehow 98% of startups fail 
and uh, over a span of five to, ne to 10 years, there are different, different statistics, uh, different analyses online. You may look uh, across all of them, but more or less these are, these is, these are like uh, constant numbers uh, on those analyses. And uh, it's incredible to see that, I mean, at least maybe for you and all, but uh, for me, when I was reading this for the first time, uh, I, was, I was shocked to learn that almost half of those startups that are failing are failing because they can't reach uh, their market. So I, I say, what, what a wait a moment. I mean, how is that they are not able to reach their market? There are, there are many situations, right? There's no market needs. Um, it's too early, like I, I did it several times, not only two. Um, but uh, this is the gap that we wanted to, we wanted to close uh, with them accelerator. We wanted to create a program where we were able, we are able to help startups and founders in designing uh, extremely uh, useful uh, businesses, business models, uh, so that they are extremely uh, valuable compared to the alternatives. And um, one thing that I learned uh, over the last three years, talking to probably 1,000 founders over the three over the four years, is that uh, founders are uh, when they talk to me at least they they're looking they're all looking for funding, and they all uh, they all believe that uh, receiving a, a capital would uh, be enough uh, to solve all their issues. Something that I and then and then what happens? And then I ask them. Of course, I have to. We have to assess the companies that are applying or the ideas that are applying to our program. And then we ask, what is the problem that you guys are solving? Um, I can. Did you know? So you, you're working on this specific field. What did you know about this market? Um, what did you know about the users, uh, the customers you would like to work with? And all of these, uh, all of these questions, sometimes they don't have, most times they don't have proper answers. So this actually, this helped me, helps me say that the main problem for those kind of startups is that uh, they're still missing uh, some kind of validation. They're still missing some kind of development that uh, in lingo it's called traction. So when a startup is actually demonstrating, um, demonstrating some value uh, in the market. And um, so that, that's, what, uh, that's what we want to do. That's what we are doing with our accelerator. We are helping our companies and ideas, uh, different, you know, depending on the program that they are taking, uh, to make steps ahead to validate the problem and the problem they are solving for a, a specific market. So they have, we help them to get to know their market and uh, we help them also to reach and to talk to that market because communication, of course, is not is not uh, not simple, and uh, in communication is definitely a, a, a strong element in our uh, in our program. We I like to say that we help our participants in creating a map of. Uh, it's not that we are doing the work for them, right? Is uh, we are helping them and we are helping them creating a map of opportunities and each each step, each node of this map, and we help them into taking choices so that the ultimate goal is for them uh, to learn how to take those choices along the the business development journey, which uh, it's 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 very long. Um, so we wanted to uh, create a program that is actually uh, not knowledge based, uh, but it's really practical and there's no theory, but there are uh, workshops and there are, uh, there are elements that are helping us in creating the right environment for, to, for our participants to do the work that they would need to do anyway, right, uh, to develop a company. So uh, we believe that definitely and depending on the experience on the founders, uh, this is this it's definitely very true for the ideation, but uh, uh, the experience demonstrated that it's true at every every level uh, in different modalities and different uh, in di different uh, yeah in different modalities that there's a there's a, a, a different way to think about uh, the business when uh, definitely. You are just working on an innovative startup. Uh, of course, we focus on innovation, so we focus on uh, innovative startups. And uh, certainty uh, is a great deal. It's a great deal for for uh, for our founders. Um, 
and uh, we help them into modeling essentially uncertainty in, uh, just because of the innovative nature of the businesses. And eventually there, we help them into designing something that has, hasn't been, uh, was not designed before. So it's a new business which require um, uh, ad hoc uh, business model. And uh, often it means that, they, that they're really working with uh, uncertain situations, right? So uh, our approach is, uh, it's, uh, it, you know, from the few photos that I put on the slides, you may guess that we have on a human centric approach. So we always look at people uh, to solve meaningful problems and uh, integrating in those uh, in this process uh, uh, economic factors and uh, for the, to create specific business models. Um, so we uh, let me show you this photo. Skipping a slide here, but let me show you this photo of uh, uh, our uh, one of the latest uh, uh, cohorts of our space. And I feel like we all feel that we just started. Uh, this is our third year. We worked with 250 participants from 20 countries. Uh, we helped these companies, some of these companies raising uh, more than $16 million and a number of sta startups uh, were able to scale up uh, from uh, country to multiple countries, uh, to region to country. It really depends on their specific cases. Um, and actually last May, we, uh, we also started our investment fund uh, so that we can keep uh, helping uh, uh, the startups that uh, we already started helping. Mm -hmm. So we this fund has two tiers and it has one first tier of $15 million, which will allow us to invest in 100 startups and 100 startups every year and a follow-up uh, investment fund uh, that will uh, reach up to $40 million so that we can invest in about 60 startups as a follow-up investment. So these are our quick um, results uh, you know, um, in, within the first three years. But how do we, let's start talk a little bit more about perhaps uh, the topics of the conference, right? Um, how do we integrate that, that data science in a, in a startup? Uh, my experience, we, we played in different ways. We tried it to, uh, first of all, it was an idea to uh, work with uh, the data science and AI team and the accelerator and to help uh, the startups, but um, uh, it, it wasn't really bringing any results. So we, uh, the second approach is to essentially uh, work with uh, mentors and work with other, um, with, with working from the angle of the team building essentially. So the startups, ideal startup to work, uh, we need at least three um, fields to be uh, three, uh, type of uh, um, founders or you know, members to work in. So we definitely need uh, designers, we definitely need engineers and storytellers that covers the cover uh, spectrum that goes from project management, data wrangling and data analysis, uh, subject experts, which usually a subject expert in the startup is usually the one that is bringing the idea. And of course, a designer and a, solid, and, 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 and a storyteller. Uh, in each participant, each participant comes from a very different, uh, different backgrounds and we facilitate this uh, multimodal design way of uh, creating a place where they can work together. And uh, especially at the beginning, it's done through hackathons, it's done through, through very short sprints and uh, they, they're really useful into um, creating the right, really, right environment within each team. Um, I, what I see is that uh, it's not like uh, 20 plus year ago when I started uh, dealing and working with the AI and uh, um, machine learning, but it's uh, right now AI, it's almost uh, like a buzzword in investment uh, arena. And uh, it, it, everybody has an idea of what it is. And uh, to me, it really offers then an opportunity so that a AI could be that opportunity to work through uh, different, multi, uh, different disciplines so that a team or an individual uh, could actually work through uh, different disciplines. And uh, in most cases, 
it, it, it's, uh, it, it's like creating a, a multidiscipl multidisciplinary uh, team you know, for, for a startup. Um, there are two elements, talking about teams, I like to see these from uh, two, two kinds of elements that help me describe the balance in a team. Um, team members usually tend to gravitate around certainty and uncertainty. And I already mentioned about these, uh, the, the certainty topic, uh, which is very crucial in, a, in, <coughs> in an innovative, sorry, in an innovative startup uh, situation um, where uh, there is um, there's definitely a, <laughs> a strong interest in, a, in, a, in an uncertainty, right? So we, um, we all need um, some level, in our life, we all need some level of certainty and startup teams uh, from a certain angle, uh, for them, a certain certainty resonates with science while uncertainty resonates with design. And of course, this could be topic for a conversation, uh, but commonly uh, designers are perceived uh, as uh, creative people um, that base their choices on intuition and many believe uh, that design is never based on data and uh, cannot be considered an empir empirical uh, process. But uh, there's also that uh, a, a designer generally, uh, the work of a designer is generally based on empathy. So just think about uh, when the, during our uh, process, uh, we have to understand the, the problems that our, pro, uh, our project, our startup is solving. And there is a fundamental, um, uh, there's a fundamental ability, which is the one that uh, the founders will need to, through empathy, understand that, that problem, understand the, um, the market, the people they're solving the problem for. And uh, it's definitely based on, uh, on, uh, on, on, uh, on empathy. So on the other side, data, data science follows uh, scientific rigor. And uh, there's an there's definitely, there are definitely algorithmic steps. And so people often associate that to some level of certainty. Um, what, uh, what we do is looking at things, problems from different point of view so that actually data can blend uh, in the process and uh, with, the, with the people that, uh, with the people that these startups are solving problems for. For example, uh, when we work with participants and uh, that are in a certain process of analyzing and uh, describing um, certain uh, data of, uh, first of all, we do a qualitative analysis that definitely resonates more with the empathy, more with designers, and then, to validate that data, we do uh, quantitative analysis as well, which usually resonate the most and uh, implies the work of data scientists. Uh, really depends on the scale of these projects, of course. So sometimes there's not enough data, depending on the field. There are, there are in the specifics, there are many, many cases. But um, also, also I've been there uh, that uh, we perhaps we don't have the right data set. It's not easily retrievable online, even uh, with the most sophisticated scraping, uh, uh, you know, actions and tools is not retrievable. So we try to work with what we have. And, uh, and that's kind of, it's getting tricky because it's like starting from the end. I, I like a lot to reverse engineer, but to reverse engineer this process, sometimes it's really tricky because you're trying to reconcile uh, some data with the problems. So you're going, uh, you're going backward. And uh, in, in science, at least, uh, it's, it's really tricky because uh, doesn't, it's, it, it's like trying to, to match something that not necessarily it's providing you the best result. And uh, in, uh, in physics and logics, they say, they call it a, a local false uh, ground state. So you're, you're not, you cannot sure that that's actually the, the best solution. So as we know, uh, data scientists are, scientists are well-trained to ask smart questions, to wrangle data to uh, uncover insights, uh, but not necessarily to show uh, that, to communicate the data in, uh, in a marketing and business, uh, business terms. So that's what the multidisciplinary approach uh, in the team really helps. And we, <clears throat> we use uh, several tools, several workshops. I, could I can definitely call it workshops 
where uh, we end up uh, often actually these tools are used uh, in, in, in two ways. One way is uh, to design the actual uh, uh, solution, in this case, a customer journey for the uh, a customer journey for a specific for a project. And, uh, and uh, the other way is actually to communicate uh, the process within the team. So multidisciplinary, uh, the right tool uh, could be really help uh, to merge uh, resources from data science and uh, design. And then of course we use this data to, in our program at least, we use this data to create pitch, uh, to create pitch, to create presentation, to create business documents um, that usually are presented to investors, are presented to a large spectrum of people depending on the circumstances. Some of this data, it could be end, end up also into a sales pitch. It could be end up part of a, a pitch for uh, acquiring a certain partnership. So even, uh, even at the, in some cases, even uh, to uh, find uh, team members, right? Uh, because it's, sometimes it's hard to build a team around an idea. So uh, the, the person that had the idea usually needs to do a little bit of more uh, work to, in order to create some attraction, uh, create some authority, uh, create some uh, uh, leadership around that idea so that it's strong enough that it can motivate somebody else uh, to join the team, essentially. So we do this, we do some of, we do some of this with uh, industry uh, and other experts with, uh, in the, so that are part of our network. Uh, on our website, we already have a, a pretty good list of mentors, but next year we're launching a new, uh, a new part of our website that will be uh, dozens and soon hopefully hundreds of uh, mentors and subject experts. And, uh, and of course, we, uh, we're already working with, uh, with our alumni, with our past participants that in some cases reached an, uh, uh, an expertise level high enough that are helping our current participants. Um, so in, uh, so have you got any, any good ideas so far? Um, I think, uh, I think that, um, um, and um, ML, uh, machine learning, and AI are really uh, important uh, in marketing. We get uh, a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of marketing uh, digital marketing tools based on the machine learning, and some of them also in, in the AI. And uh, for example, there's this. Uh, in case I'm, I'm, some of you may know this uh, key activation element, so. Let's say there's a website, there's a, there's a startup that has a website and they're trying to get some more loyal customers. They're trying to get some more stickiness on their web pages. Uh, they're trying to have users uh, uh, actually using their pages uh, more. So they, are, they need to, sometimes when that doesn't happen, they have to find this key activation event, which is essentially it's a series, could be a series of events, a series of behaviors from the users that are somehow uh, um, really uh, fundamental into uh, having customers becoming more loyal. For example, inter uh, Twitter at the beginning, uh, they already had uh, many thousands of uh, users, but they were looking for a way to figure out the right funnel, the right customer journey, so they were trying to figure out what is that. So we have this, we have uh, a lot of users, a small portion of these are actually using the platform and they are active and they are recurrent in our platforms. What is that they have done differently to the other users? They are not really uh, active on our platform. So you do that with tracking a lot of data, right? And you do that with accumulating a lot of data and then uh, going back and processing the data. And they figured out that essentially uh, they needed to, uh, they found out that their more loyal customers were able to, in the first day of opening up an account, they were able to acquire five to 10 people. They were able to um, connect to five to 10 people. And, and that is a great data insight, right? And the data actually, that insight actually um, uh, sprung them essentially into uh, creating a, a feature that I believe was called uh, 
basically suggestions for who to follow who. So you, you, you get an account and you have some suggestions who you should follow. And so they're trying to replicate to create uh, that incentive uh, of uh, you know uh, reaching connecting to the five to ten people that would unlock uh, loyalty loyal to be more loyal essentially. So if you're interested in these kind of problems, uh, reach out. If uh, if uh, I have to, we started a little early, so uh, this is one my one of the last slides. So thank you for staying with me until the end. If there is anything that I've said that particularly resonated with you, please let me know. I like to talk to you. And um, and by the end of this year, we're gonna um, we're gonna get more. So essentially, we are almost to the 2,000 applications uh, received for to be part of our cohort. Um, and we have, of course, we have a selection process and uh, for the business that we're working with, and we're very excited about it. And uh, if if um, we're always excited to work with uh, in collaborations with other regardless of uh, being a participant or not, we're always looking for uh, mentors for our board, uh, students or others for, uh, for internships on our accelerator. So thank you again for uh, staying with me until the end. And uh, I think I'll leave the work to you, Jason, in case there are some uh, questions. Yeah, uh, thank you, Alexander. Uh, we had, you know, uh, several, you know, talk about, you know, how we can, you know, help the young professionals uh, or the young entrepreneurship, especially in our idea community. We have a lot of, you know, uh, machine learning engineer, AI scientists um, who has, you know, uh, many years working experience or, you know, even, you know, PhD uh, degree in computer science and engineer. So, it's a, I think that is a great, you know, idea. So they, they can, you know, uh, leverage their knowledge and the skills and working experience to start their entrepreneurship. So um, I think, you know, we have one question from uh, Jen. Uh, it's in the Q&A window. Uh, let me uh, pick up one question from, okay, from our attendee. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, Jane. Jane, yeah. So Jane uh, is asking uh, when you consider to invest or incubate a startup. What are the top three factors you consider? What excites you the most in AI data space and why? So interesting question. Thank you, Jane. Um, so uh, definitely uh, something interesting that is happening is that all startups, all tech startups that are applying, they all. Uh, somehow AI related. So uh, I don't look at AI anymore as a factor because pretty much all the startups have it, right? And uh, just uh, just a, just an interesting aspect, but it, it was the same in any major innovation essentially, right? I believe I was not running any accelerator, but when internet came out, I bet there were uh, most of the uh, software or most of the startups uh, working on a web app or working on web uh, enabled internet uh, uh, businesses. Um, uh, I look at the, so because we work uh, at, um, I don't, dis we, first of all, we are technology agnostic. So we work pretty much with any technology, with any kind of technology. Uh, there are a couple, definitely to start with, I have to get to know the founder. I have to, uh, our program is not for everyone. Um, and it's not a marketing slogan. It's actually because we follow a learning process, right? So we have, we have sprints, we have loops, we have from four up to 12 weeks of program where we create, it's not theory based, it's not knowledge based, but we create an environment for our participants to, to do the work and they have to be open to do that work, right? So besides reading the descriptions on our website, uh, there is already filtering, right? And then we get applications, uh, and then we, we read the, the, a little bit about the motivations. If there are some questions that we ask in the application. We do some filterings over there, and then at a certain point, they, they have to jump on a phone call with me or, or my associates. 
So what we look at is as to be an open-minded founder that is interested in going through these uh, work with us. With, uh, that implies a learning process because you have to realize that a lot of founders uh, they uh, they are not interested in doing this. They believe they're already ready for funding. So if that's the case, probably our accelerator is not the one that I would recommend. Our core value is not in the fund that we're building, it's not in the capability of us uh, matchmaking these founders with investors, but it's in the ability of leveling up these founders and putting them at the right level so that they are able to uh, pitch investors. Them, I mean, putting, uh, improving the businesses and somehow uh, a learning experience for themselves as well. So I would say that we look at these, uh, these kind of, uh, uh, um, soft skills uh, um, metrics uh, in the founders. Of course, we also look at the idea. If it's an idea, we look at the startup. If it's already in the market, and we look at the company. If it's already like a, a scale up, or and uh, if it's something that we feel strongly, we can help. Uh, we can definitely we can definitely work together. Uh, but I would say that at the stage we're working the, uh, with the startup. Uh, with the startups, which is early stage, uh, primarily early stage, uh, most of the uh, most of our attention is with the founder. Even though sometimes we don't necessarily are extremely excited about the idea, but what we want to do is to work with uh, people that are extremely motivated, open-minded, and uh, somehow they resonate with our values. So there's another question, right? So there's. Uh, Fairuz that uh, asks, um, what is the success rate of the startups you have helped so far compared to the 98 uh, rate uh, failure rate started at the beginning of the presentation? Yeah. So I, so yeah, I have some metrics. Essentially, when we started uh, in at the fall of 2017 with the first cohort, we run several cohorts with ideation. And uh, and then we uh, the, the following at the end of follow one year after we started working with proper companies and uh, ours essentially we go through the pro the companies the startups the teams they go through the program and uh, let's say if if you allow me to 15 startups graduated from the program right across the 250 participants perhaps organized in teams already we had 15 solid projects that we were able to actually to make the next steps. Uh, and out of those 15, 12 entered the market in some way, different ways, uh, incorporated, raised funds, um, scale ups, um, and uh, they entered the market. So the success, uh, it's, it, it's, we have to also define, provide some definitions, right? What do you mean by success? Uh, in our program, just because we, we work with participants at a specific stage, uh, success it means making it to the next stage, right? So uh, if, you based on, if we base that on uh, success on this uh, metric, definitely our uh, success rate is, is pretty high. So we have uh, one of the companies that we have um, they were a uh, scale up that it's extremely successful in Southeast Asia. Uh, we have a extremely successful company here in the US. They launched a pilot program in Texas and they do um, pizza automation, uh, food automation. And it's uh, the first product, it's a pizza kitchen, uh, fully automated machine. And it's a pretty successful company that it's more likely going to be valued at over uh, $1 billion within the next five years. So, and then we have smaller companies as well. They started from just an idea of our program. And now they're running companies in Europe, the companies between Asia and in uh, and the US. The success rate, if, uh, if they graduate, it's usually pretty high. Um, and based on that, actually, we built our financial model for the investment fund. Uh, which, uh, you know, uh, on a theory provides 35% of internal re rate uh, revenue, re revenue rate, which is crazy. So, um, but so this, I hope this answers your question, but um, I go on with another question by Leon. 
And uh, my research topic is in entrepreneurship as to uh, how to establish a more sound entrepreneurial ecosystem. Okay. But again, this topic is relative, is uh, related to people, academics, I know got skeptical about AI, uh, entrepreneurship research. Okay. What would you say uh, to convince them that this research paradigm works uh, and might work better than structural equation modeling? Okay. We know that these two models, uh, structural equation modeling and AI potentially are solving, are able, capable of solving uh, problems in, in, uh, in both, right? Um, the AI somehow makes things easier because we don't have to understand, we don't have to understand all the, all the, the, all the equations, all the math model about that. Um, I would say that um, AI per se, deep learning has still a lot, uh, a lot of uh, road to make uh, before being fully validated. But uh, it's um, it, it's uh, what in generally what I do. Uh, yeah, I was just talking about yesterday uh, similar questions to one of our participants. So what we are really good in doing, and personally what I've been doing for many years, I was really good in building tools. So what we do with participants when we are struggling answer questions is that we help them in building tools that are supporting the, the question. So they're supporting us to answer the question. So things have to be validated, right? So it's not that we, uh, I, I believe in mythology or other things. So it's always something very practical. It's always something that has to be validated. If an idea uh, is validated in several ways, then we can, we can show that, uh, you know, it's, uh, as, um, I, 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 it's hard for me to answer at, um, at, at large in general. I don't, I don't really, uh, uh, you know, talking about general topics, it's very tough. So I always try to craft like uh, circumstances and be more specific. But usually the general answer is this one, is that I, I like to build tools that so that are helping us in answering uh, questions in a ponderate way. So we have uh, data that supports it, right? We have cases, perhaps. And uh, when you have cases, you can support the thesis, right? So I hope that this answered, uh, or maybe I digressed a little bit, but uh, feel free to <laughs> touch base again or right here again. So uh, Gazala, your thoughts on building high performance teams. Okay, that's interesting. I had a conversation about it. Um, so in general, so we, of course, we are called M accelerator, right? It's not, we didn't call ourselves M the accelerator, but uh, this is uh, actually, it was a, an interesting topic I had with our business uh, lead coach uh, maybe a couple of years ago. Um, what we do in our program, it's really like uh, spend time into uh, understanding the meaning of the problems our uh, participants, founders are solving. We really spend time into understanding uh, the value of those uh, problems, the value of those um, solutions, perhaps or those uh, propositions and uh, and uh, and somehow that requires time that requires really a lot of uh, work and uh, and that's uh, and that's uh, a little bit in uh, conflicts so with the concept of uh, high performance but it really depends how i'm sure there is a defini a proper definition i'm not a fan of a general definition uh, there's, I'm sure there's a, um, you know, very specific definition for high performance team, but teams, but if you, uh, it's definitely time is, it cannot be, uh, I, I would like to remove time from that equ equation because, uh, we do programs, for example, in four weeks, eight weeks, 12 weeks, uh, these are very, very short times to achieve results and really depends on the pace, really depends on the work that our participants are putting in the, in the assignments and the tasks that we're providing. And um, yeah, that's it. Hopefully, hopefully helpful. Yeah, thank you, Alexandra. Thank you, you know, answer the question from attendees. Uh, I think, you know, both you and I, uh, we are living and working in the city, Los Angeles. <laughs> uh, but today, you know, um, we have a lot of attendees. Uh, they are from, I know some of them, they are from Silicon Valley. So 
you know, in Los Angeles, we have uh, Santa Monica, uh, you know, the city of Santa Monica is called uh, uh, Silicon uh, Beach. It's, uh, it's also very popular in the staff, you know, community. So um, comparing with uh, Silicon Valley, you know, San Francisco, San Jose, you know, Mountain View, uh, with, you know, our city, Santa Monica. So for the entrepreneurs, for the startup company, what's the difference? Uh, yeah. yeah, so I, um, yeah, we're both here and uh, I don't remember how long you've been here, but I believe many years, right? Uh, mm -hmm. I've been here for, uh, uh, yeah, 17, 18 years. And, um, and uh, essentially, at the beginning, uh, my idea was to spend only six months <laughs> to do my thesis. And then uh, I, had I think I received the first contract for, was for one year. I said, okay, let's stay for another year. And then another project, okay, let's stay for another year. And then a lot of projects became longer. Let's stay for you know, three, four, five. And at the end, uh, we lost counting with, uh, with my wife. But um, I believe that Los Angeles um, has a great resource uh, from the creative industry. So my experience, I was lucky enough to work at the Remap Center, where I, which, I was, which is located in the School of Theater, Film and Television. I was exposed by a great deal of uh, creative projects, uh, projects re uh, uh, related to the media industry in general, to the somehow the film industry and, uh, and other creative uh, industries. But I believe that the, um, the coexistence of uh, creative labors of many engineers in Los Angeles, we graduating uh, the highest number of engineers in California. And then of course they go to Silicon Valley, but they graduating from uh, Caltech, from uh, USC, UCLA, and, um, and then we also have expertise from managerial expertise from the uh, media industry as well. And uh, we see that more and more every week, every month, there are more venture capitalists uh, opening offices or coming down from San Francisco, mainly because they see uh, better, greater opportunities of investment here. Uh, usually what I noticed in the short uh, leap of uh, M Accelerator is that uh, companies in Los Angeles have uh, tend to have uh, a lower ev evaluation, right? And that means often a better, a, a, a considering same quality, right? Same value, same fundamental value for uh, different companies. That means that uh, it's a better opportunity for investment. And uh, and this is something that investors uh, and venture capitals from uh, San Francisco and Silicon Valley they realized and. Uh, I'm saying the truth when uh, at least uh, one uh, office, one VC family office or creative investors is reaching us out uh, via email just because we are located in Los Angeles and they are interested either in opening or perhaps they just opened an office here and they're interested in understanding what is happening in Los Angeles. So when I started here, I was of course working in an environment, in a research and you know, really you know, in our, uh, innovation driven environment. So. I thought that Los Angeles was the perfect town for innovation, putting together creativity, engineering, right? Uh, and then when I when I started uh, talking to people outside of the academia, I thought outside of the U.S., even outside of the U.S., I realized that Los Angeles, of course, of course, it was very well known as the entertainment capital of the world, not like, not because of the innovation capital of the world. So, uh, but over the last ten years, something has changed. Something gradually improved, and uh, Los Angeles uh, is is getting there into making itself known as a, a capital of <laughs> the innovation. There is also a, a study from the Boston Consulting Group with another organization in Los Angeles devoted to innovations for uh, businesses. And they uh, actually stating that the, con um, the, um, the fact that we have more uh, capital, more investment capital here, that we have a certain number of Fortune 100 companies here, a certain number of uh, venture capitalists, and because of the creative labors and because of the engineering, uh, you know, the engineers that are graduating from here, 
it puts uh, Los Angeles higher up in the uh, in this rank of what's gonna where's gonna be the next Silicon Valley. So it, it's it's an exciting study, and you can look it up online. It's uh, just look at Los Angeles Boston's consult consulting group, or actually we wrote an article linking that study on our blog, which is mAccelerator.la. And this is really exciting. I mean, I, I always believed that uh, Los Angeles was uh, a very, one of the most diverse uh, town in, in the US. And I believe also diversity, like uh, the same way the multidisciplinary, it's a fundamental element into creating innovation. Uh, we strongly believe that. And, uh, and uh, of, of maybe perhaps you notice the diversity in our cohort. We work with 70% of our participants are from abroad somehow, either because they're already here, internationals here in Los Angeles or internationals that came uh, for our program. So it, 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 it's, it's a great, having several accents and several cultures represented in, in, a, in a startup, it, it's a great uh, added value. Yeah, thank you for your uh, response to my uh, question. And uh, um, we are so excited to, you know, to see, you know, I know in the very soon future, you will have another cohort of the, you know, uh, entrepreneur, you know, training program. We are so, you know, excited about that. And uh, also, again, thank you, Alexander, to join us today. Uh, and also thank you for all the attendees. It won't be easy to work during the weekend, but today really enjoy that. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Uh, thank you everybody for uh, listening. <laughs>